sex. It's a topic on everyone's lips. But just how far does your knowledge stretch? Do you think fellatio was one of the characters in The Merchant of Venice? Do you think cunnilingus flies three times a day to Ireland? Do you think erogenous zones are just to the north of the Azores? If you think dildo was a character in The Hobbit, you definitely need this video. In fact, if you've ever had sex, wanted sex, or wondered what it's like, this video is for you. We're going to prove that a little goes a long way and also show you exactly what a little is. But this video isn't just for people who think that gonorrhea was one of King Lear's daughters. It's also for men and women of the world. Because when it comes to sex, no matter what you think you know, there's always something you don't. Mariella! Mariella! But we don't want you to just lie back and enjoy it. With this program, like with all good sex, we want you to become involved, interact, take the initiative, lose your inhibitions and perhaps loosen your clothing. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Ah, if only reproduction was so simple. The aim of this section is to give you the facts about the human sexual organs. Knowing where everything is, is very important. For instance, the male spider's penis is at the end of one of its legs. The human male's penis isn't, which is why men don't hop everywhere. The penis tends to be the centre of attention, especially when stimulated. It becomes erect with an influx of blood. This, of course, makes penetration possible. However, it's the testes which do much of the hard graft, churning out billions of sperm and carefully regulating minuscule amounts of sex drive hormone into the blood. All men have only got the one penis. Any man telling you differently is simply boasting. There's no bone in the human penis, a characteristic shared with only one other animal, the hyena. It adds to flexibility and also explains why both animals can often be found grinning to themselves. The burning question about the human penis is, does size count? Not really. The hard facts reveal that there's a lot of misinformation going around. Ninety-five percent of men fall between 5.8 and 7 inches when erect. The average relaxed penis is 4 inches. Anything less than that and the penis won't be feeling relaxed at all, but rather nervous and paranoid. Female genitalia are harder to spot than men's, resembling a highly confusing labyrinth. Like the penis, they can also vary in size, with a certain African tribe recording labia of up to seven inches in length. The vagina can never be too big for sex, but prostitutes were known to use alum to constrict the vaginal wall, thus faking virginity. The clitoris is one inch long and hooded and as far as some men are concerned, about as hard to locate as the Holy Grail. Correct identification is, however, essential, as it is the most sensitive part of the female genitalia. This is where you find it, because sometimes you men out there get a bit lost now, don't you? If you do, you can always stop in the street and ask directions. People have a tendency to name their sexual organs, presumably because they get so attached to them. When thinking up a name, try to think of something appropriate to its function. A classic of that ilk is pork sword. Pork, because the owner sometimes behaves like a pig, and sword because the word vagina comes from the Latin word for where Roman soldiers used to put their swords. Metal, that is, not pork. Also, when trying to come up with a name, think of something that indicates a place of pleasure. So, that's the body parts. They're important, but remember that the parts rarely add up to more than the sum of the whole. And if you can't find the whole, you're off to a bad start. Just practicing. Done correctly, a good kiss can be sexier than sex. In fact, for us girls, it's supposedly the main form of sexual arousal. Learn to be a good kisser and you're halfway there. 
A good kiss should leave your partner breathless, but not asphyxiated. Nobody can hold their head, or for that matter anything else up high, without a thorough knowledge of the erogenous zones. The E-zones are those parts of the body which respond fastest to sexual stimulation. The man who located the areas known as G-spots was von Grattenberg. The G-spots are sort of mega erogenous zones which, when touched, turn the owner into sexual guacamole. To be able to move confidently in this area, you must have a thorough knowledge of where your own erogenous zones are and how to find someone else's in a hurry or even in the dark. Ah! Oh look, these two are stuck together. The orgasm also known as the Big O. It's often regarded as the peak, the pinnacle, the climax of the sexual act. It occurs when the sexual tubes go into muscular spasms and the brain follows up with a sensation of extreme pleasure. The male orgasm is usually accompanied by an ejaculation of sperm at 28 miles per hour in built-up areas or 24 miles per hour without the build-up. There are three types of female orgasm. The clitoral. Oh, darling, you're wonderful! The vaginal. Darling, you're the best! The best! And the multiple. You're never leaving this room! Never! Oh. Now, you know how to cause orgasms. You must now learn men how to stop them and women how to fake them. Women, you don't have to worry too much about faking orgasms, especially if the earth hasn't moved for you. According to a recent Cosmopolitan survey, a third of women admit to faking orgasms. We, in fact, conducted a little survey of our own. With men, the main thing to know about is how to defer an orgasm. If you're having to fake them, you're in big trouble. The facts are that after entry into the vagina, the average man comes after four minutes, which frankly isn't good enough. Oh dear, Much of a mess, really. For those frustrated in other ways, here's a sexual karaoke, which will allow the determined bluffer to learn some useful phrases to cry out during climaxes. Jelly on a plate! Whoa, whoa, whoa! Ooh, no, missus! zippity doo da zippity day You're so big, you're so big, you're so big! 180! Ha, 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 When it comes to sexual positions, you must know the names of all the important ones and, of course, how to do them. If someone suggests you do the bull among the cows, it's no good going, Mm, could you run through that one again? It seems to have slipped my mind. But remember, you must start moving confidently and briskly into position, even if you don't know what on earth you're doing. So what about the cost of sex? Not emotionally, physically or psychologically, we're talking hard cash here. So let's be scientific about this. There are an average of 87 pelvic thrusts in a sexual performance. And that's not counting the days when there's a double performance or a matinee. Now the average frequency couples make love is two and a half times a week. The half time being when you make love drunk after eating a curry and fall asleep before the end. Therefore, if the average cost of a double bed is 500 pounds and we replace it every 10 years, that works out at a half P per pelvic thrust, unless of course you give her a fourpenny one. And overall, the sexual act will cost you 38p per time, the same price as a pint of milk. Now let's see if I've got enough. Oh dear, I'm going to have to pass this time. <laughs>